Thank you guys for coming today. And I think we need to give a big air high five to Jeff Knight and thank him. Go ahead and air high five where he just literally went to right now. <laughs> and then pat yourself on the back for coming today. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back for waking up nice and early. <laughs> for something you probably didn't know what it was, and then high five the person to your left and to your right, like literally give them a high five, because <laughs> we all need to wake up. <laughs> Me too, high five, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm not gonna leave them hanging. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for coming today, we're really excited this is happening. And so, I'm Ashley with Unglued, and you're probably familiar if you were at One Million Cups, but I grew up on the Iron Range of Minnesota, and that is where my craft story starts. Is anyone familiar with the Iron Range at all, a little bit? It's like a different planet, according to Justin. And I grew up feeding wild black bears, as you may have seen, um, and my parents would bring us to Orr, Minnesota, that's my brother, and in the very back is this man named Vince Shute and he owned a logging business back in the day. And in order to keep the bears out of his logger's cabins, he fed them in a field far away. And after he retired, people like my parents found out and we would go and feed them out of our bare hands, which I think is pretty magical. And my favorite part about it is that we didn't even question it. We did it without any hesitation at all. <laughs> and during that same childhood, I loved to do events even then. And I started things like Club Friendly, which was a little neighborhood club and our slogan was, happiness is helping others. And our theme song was, that's what friends are for by Dionne Warwick, if anyone's familiar <laughs> with that too. <laughs> and into college, I continued to love doing events, uh, but it kind of turned to be a little bit more of giving people a creative platform. And so we would hold coffee houses in our garage and we'd make terrible coffee with a broken espresso maker and then people could share their art, poetry, and music. But I became a nurse and I had read books in high school, like 10 Challenges of a World Changer. If anyone's familiar with that, you understand me more than most people probably ever will. And I thought my life would only count if I would be a missionary nurse in a straw hut somewhere in a developing country and I'd be single my whole life. Um, but even as I started my college career, career, and then into my nursing career, I kind of felt like this isn't my jam, this nursing thing. I know I'm making a difference, but I don't feel like I'm using my experiences, abilities, talents, and my passion that I had for so long up until that point. But I kept being a nurse, and I didn't give up on it, and I kept nurturing that side love of things, all event-related. And then in about 2006-ish, I moved to Fargo, and I started to meet friends or reconnect with old ones that were getting together to make things. And I found it incredibly fulfilling, and some of those friends started to sell their work. But they didn't find success on Etsy, it was already oversaturated, and you needed it, but it was hard to just show up on Etsy and be seen. And we also didn't have success at traditional craft shows when they would go there. And their work stood out as incredibly unique, but it just didn't have success sales-wise. And so by chance, I went to Des Moines, Iowa, and I experienced something called Market Days that still happens today. And I thought, this needs to happen in Fargo. And so very quickly after that, we put up a bunch of indie crafter wanted signs around town and posted this fancy poster. And we put on our first unglued craft fest in the dead of winter in 2010. And we brought together modern makers and we offered things like free workshops for kids and adults to also get creative on that day too. So if we kick it off to today, about eight years later, we now have our store in downtown Fargo that's been open for about six years. And through this, we've connected the community with over 300 makers, and we continue to inspire creativity with things like our kids' downtown camps, our private and public workshop parties, late night craft parties. We've continued to do our annual craft fest. And my very favorite thing, which is our adult summer camp, <laughs> that you can enjoy this little cameo <laughs> by many of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, did you hear what Billy did last night? And Jeff and I thought we were like the band. You're going down, fart liquor. My craps have more talent than you. Ugh, I hate you so much. Be peeling your kneecaps off the asphalt. It's not what your mom said last night. <laughs> Thank you.
So, <laughs> so my very favorite thing that we do now is our adult summer camp, which some of you have come to, which is awesome. Um, we bring out over 130 adults to YMCA Camp Cormorant. Both men and women come out and take badass workshops taught by local makers, and they earn merit badges. And you can kind of picture the rest being like a childhood summer camp, but with a cocktail in hand. And we treat it very similarly to the Creative Mornings Manifesto, which starts out with everyone is creative. And so it's become my favorite thing because we see people who say, I can never make that or I'm just not creative, come to camp and they start to make something for just that short 48 hours and they see their potential in like having a creative outlet and going beyond that. And so while it makes all the sense in the world today that I would be here to talk about craft with unglued at my side, it is one of my very least favorite words. And I just know what people think when they hear the word craft, that I run a craft shop or do a craft fest or run a craft camp. One well, of the first things it means is it's going to be incredibly difficult to get your husband to come to our adult summer camp when you just say, let's go to craft camp. <laughs> Even though once he finally comes, he'll say in his post survey, he'll be coming back every year for the rest of his life. And there's a good chance when you hear the word craft that you think of things like a, like a church basement bazaar or quilted handbags or maybe a popsicle stick with googly eyes. <laughs> and while those all have a place in our life, uh, people can sometimes tend to downgrade the idea of an event or an item when they associate the word craft with it, at least in our world. And so we're always working to elevate this word. And so if we could redefine it for just a moment the way that we do it at Unglued and feel it could easily be universally, is it's the act or action of making and creating. It doesn't have to be something that you've become super masterfully skilled at, although it can be. And it doesn't have to be based in patterns or off of Pinterest or in perfection. And it doesn't have to be justifiable by being able to sell it on Etsy or in a craft shop. It could just be you thinking, I want to learn how to indigo dye, looking it up on YouTube, buying the supplies, and actually taking the time to make it. And if we could pause for a quick sec here, I had become a nurse because I thought that would be the way that I could make the biggest difference in the world. And so when I considered quitting that career to do something this involved in craft, I kind of questioned if it really could make that big of a difference. And it turns out it can, and it is all thanks to craft. And I really think that it could be a game changer in your own life as well, no matter if what you do is defined as creative or not. And there's three lessons we're going to hit up today briefly that we've learned from summer camp and other things we've done related to craft, and then also science, because I still love to nerd out about that with the little bit of nursing background that I have. And I really think that craft can help you stay curious, it can help you get chill, and be kick-ass. So if we're going to just jump into curiosity, <laughs> can you tell me who said, I have no special talents, I am only passionately curious? It's kind of a well-known-ish quote but maybe not in 8 a.m. in the morning. Einstein. Yes, it was Albert Einstein. You can thank him for that nugget. <laughs> and I think it's no secret that as we get older, we start to lose that curiosity and that sense of curiosity that used to make life extra interesting or propel us to try something new and different or to think just outside the box. And we have all kinds of excuses for that, whether it's our daily obligations adding up or just Netflix and things like that, too, very easily are a great distraction. And we tend to prioritize thing in our things in our life that only have practical use right at that moment. And we think of it as a luxury to have a hobby or to just learn a new class, go to something in town, or just to sit down and make it on your own. And let me tell you, Steve Jobs attributes this calligraphy course taught by this man here to being what impacted him 10 years later to developing the fonts and the look of the Apple products that we now know. And he acknowledged in his Stanford commencement address that that had no practical application for his life at the time. But he could see this crazy change it was just by being curious enough to try something especially related to making and creating. And it is actually science, and my GIF doesn't work, which is really sad, but that's okay. It's actually science that getting crafty, there we go, <laughs> that getting crafty and creative will make you better at your job no matter what it is, if it's in the creative field or not. And so why not just jump into something that sparked your interest that you want to make and see where it can lead? And I think very easily that it is our stress level that tends to be a great distraction for just being curious enough to take the time to make something or take the time to sign up for a class or just do something with friends. And so if you guys today had to rate your stress level this past week on a scale of 0 to 10, 
with 10 being max blowout stress, if you had to rate it above a 5, who would rate it above a 5? Anyone here? Yeah? I get it. <laughs> um, our bodies are in a constant state of stress, and they can be if we let it happen. And our brains can't tell the difference between an upcoming bear attack or just a meeting with our boss. And when we're in that constant state of stress, we release things like cortisol, which is our stress hormone. And when that is constantly being elevated, it can be really easily damaging to our blood vessels and eventually lead to things like heart disease and stroke, which is near and dear to my cardiac nursing background heart. But we can actually start to counteract the effects of stress by just getting crafty and creative. When we actually sit down to make something and have to pay attention to what we're doing with our hands, we release things like dopamine, which is that natural feel-good chemical and an antidepressant that naturally happens. And we can decrease our cortisol level, which is that stress hormone. And especially if you get involved in something that has repetitive motion involved with it, like knitting or embroidery, or maybe forms of woodworking, you can quiet down that fight and flight response by activating your parasympathetic nervous system. And all of that leads to building a buffer against stress in the future. And you can actually start to counteract the negative psychological effects of stress just by getting crafty, <laughs> which I think is quite magical. And while through craft we see that we can help people get curious and stay curious, and we can help them chill out a little bit when life can be so stressful and our schedules are so jam-packed, probably the highlight for me of doing things revolving around craft is that we can help people kick ass. And another word for that would be to increase their self-efficacy, or basically the, how they feel about their ability to perform certain tasks. When you have an increased self-efficacy level, you're more willing to take on new challenges and overcome disappointments. It's basically believing in your inner kickassery. And I think another thing we could agree on is that as you get into adulthood, it's really easy to start to define yourself as this one singular thing in life, whether it's your family role or it's your career role. And while those can be really good things, if you start to only identify as that thing in life, it can be really easy to get stuck in a rut and start to lose a sense of self and self-worth. And so crafting can help that. And one of my favorite studies is related to um, social identity and knitting. <laughs> and so cancer patients were taught how to knit. And after doing a few rounds of it, they started to actually identify themselves as something other than a cancer patient, which is pretty crazy that just simply craft can do that. And other things that they had been trying at the time couldn't change that mentality. And it was through craft that they could. And we can see it with our craft camp. After just being there for 48 hours or so, the change that people have um, afterwards in their post surveys. And they say things like, after camp, I felt like I wasn't just a mom anymore. I felt so much more me. And their whole language changes after camp in their post surveys to say things like, I left feeling so motivated to go out and kick some ass. And in our own life in Unglued, we've had some pretty epic failures as well. And one was when we needed to close our Sioux Falls store after having that open for about two and a half years. And as we were coming to that decision, we knew that it could be a pretty public failure as well, something that we really believed and were really passionate about making it work. And when I think about how I treated that failure in my life in a different way, I can actually attribute it to crafting, which might sound crazy, but it really worked. And when I had to sit down to make things, I was able to temporarily disconnect, forget about that situation just for a brief period of time, enough to gain new perspective on what I was doing. And some of that craft was needed because we needed to do it for a closing craft party we did or our new segment or something like that. But really, just by taking that time out of the craziness of it all, it can really help disconnect from all the craziness around. And it also helped me get grounded and just ready for the next thing. And the best thing, I think, about crafting is that it doesn't just end when you're done with the process of it. You actually can, you will end up with the reward of having a final project or something that you'll be continuing to work on forever, if you're like me and embroidery bags. But you'll be able to keep looking at it and you get repeated hits of dopamine when you see your final project or you gift it to somebody and you get praise or compliments for it too. And so it's really the gift that keeps on giving. And if you're still like, I'm not sure if I need to get a hot glue gun or a wood burning tool, probably one of my favorite quotes coming out of our camp <laughs> is, I think these events help me realize my true potential as a human being. I've never felt creative, but I feel so alive. You make me feel like an artist. These kinds of events encourage me to be a better person and to strive to enjoy the time we have. 
So if the idea was we just can make people get warm fuzzies and feel good about themselves, that would be amazing in itself. But we know through science and even things like just craft camp or craft classes that we can help you get curious and stay curious, make your life more interesting. We can help you live a healthier life, and we can help you actually kick ass. And so now you all get to craft <laughs> underneath your seats. <laughs> you can take this out. It's your little blue bag. And these are what we're going to do. And for those of you in the back, we have more, but they're unfortunately in a different room. So, you know, we'll do that later. <laughs> this will be your two-minute craft. So you're going to take out your little mug. And now you have a brand spanking new uh, camping mug, or one that you should bring to Creative Mornings next time. And then you're going to take out the little Fargo Creative Mornings logo that is in your cup. And there's a piece of parchment paper on the back of the stickiness. So you're very carefully, <laughs> hopefully this works, you're going to peel back that parchment paper so that you just have that sticker left. So that just existed so it didn't stick on the inside of your mug and be a sad mug. <laughs> and then you'll see that there's an obvious sticky side to this. And you're going to think about where you want it to go on your mug. Maybe on the bottom, <laughs> maybe upside down, whatever you want to do. And then you're very carefully going to put the sticker on your mug. But once it's there, you're pretty committed to where it's going. So like, think about it for a minute, like which way do I want to hold my coffee mug? And then you just set it down, maybe evenly. <laughs> and then we're going to smooth it out just a little bit, get any air bubbles out of it. And we want to like start to press a little bit harder. And then once you're pretty feeling good about it, you can peel back the tape part and make sure your sticker stays down on it. And keep revealing your image. I'm going to drink coffee. Oh, that's so much better. And then you want to rub it down real good <laughs> and get any air bubbles out. And now you have your brand new mug that you made and crafted up that hopefully you'll keep feeling really good about yourself after this. <laughs> when you use your mug or bring it camping, just don't put it in the dishwasher, because then it would just be a mug, which is also fine. Uh, but bring it back to your next Creative Mornings, and we'll be all sustainable as well, and that would be fun. So yay, yay mugs. Yay, you crafting. We are not done yet. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Well, we're going to go back to the bears really quickly. And, and so Justin and I went to the, what is now known as the Vince Shoot Bear Sanctuary in Orr, Minnesota. And it's a pretty different experience now. And so you board a bus where you get shuttled to a viewing platform. And you step off the bus onto a caged staircase that you walk up to go onto this viewing platform so you can now see a professional bear feeder feed the bears. Which is great too. But I feel like this is us going into adulthood, where we start to, especially if you don't identify as being creative, and we start to put ourselves and confine us in boxes of our identity or what we think our creativity potential is. We don't really ever step foot into new things and trying new things or taking creative risks when really that's maybe what we've just needed all along. We kind of stand on like this viewing platform and we, we think that's great that these other people are doing this, but I could never do it. And whether or not you feel creative isn't even the question. You have literally everything you need to get creative again. And it's your curiosity, your senses, your human existence. And somewhere in your lineage, there is a maker back there in your family history. And so my hope is that you'll jump into the bear den of creativity and just try something new. I really believe it'll change your life by helping you get more curious about craft and just trying interesting things. It'll help your health, it'll help you be who you really are, and it'll even make you better at your job. And so if we could just raise our empty coffee mugs <laughs> and give a toast to you doing this today, and if we could toast to the future of making, creating, and crafting so that we can live life fully and kick some ass, that would be great. And just ride the bear. Thank you. <laughs> that is it now. <laughs> Thank you. Give me your mind. Yeah.